Hey folks, it's Ben. We're here with another repair video on our Samsung dryer with our moisture sensor and our HE technicalness of it. Uh, the issue we're having with the dryer now, and I'm going to call this part two, uh, even though at, when I did part one, I didn't realize it was going to be a part two. <laughs> uh, we lost the, the heater element. It had a break in the element, so it stopped heating. So uh, we took that apart and fixed it. And that's what's in this first video, which I'll link at the end of this video in case you missed it. Uh, but what happened is that two things happened. When we had the dryer open, we noticed that one of the rear bearings that holds the drum up was toast, like it had actually almost come apart. So that was part of the reason why we were getting more sound with it. Number two, uh, we started overheating, which indicates that obviously we messed with the heater element and that's part of the heating system. So that did something, right? But uh, maybe we have a sensor, I think the sensor on the heating element isn't working correctly. Maybe it's blocked or plugged or whatever. I'm not sure. But long story short, we can fix these things fairly inexpensively. Uh, so what we have here is actually a bag I bought on Amazon. I believe it cost about $25. And it contains all four sensors. Uh, there's a moisture sensor, a thermostat for the heater, a fuse for the heater element, and another sensor, which I um, can't quite remember what it does, honestly, but it, four sensors for $25. And what we'll do is we'll have this unit open and we're gonna go ahead and change all the sensors. The heater element, the new one still works, so we don't need to change it. And then because of our failed bearing, you can get bearings, but you can also get the belt as well. And this dryer is eight years old, so it's probably due, is what I'm thinking. So uh, what this bag box contains, another $30 box, is. It contains our four new bearings for our drum. Uh, there's two in the back and two in the front that the drum essentially rides on. But then while I was here, it's like, well, we could probably also replace the belt since we have to take the drum out anyway to replace the, uh, the bearings. So what we have here, this is a, uh, a, a tensioner for the belt. It's brand new. Um, so we'll replace the tensioner and the spring that keeps tension on the belt will replace. And then of course the belt itself. So we're in it for almost a little over, let's say 60 bucks total, plus our heater element, which was also about 25, 30 bucks or so. So we're in it now for, we're still under a hundred dollars to renew what we think is a nice dryer. It, it dries very well and, and does its job. It's like 7.2 cubic feet. It's fairly large as well. Matches our Samsung washer, which we really don't like. Uh, but uh, this should renew this dryer and we should never have to change it like we might get a new dryer with a new washer within the next year or two just because this one is completely rusting out on us but uh, the dryer will probably remain and so we'd like to keep it running we like it so uh, we'll do a sensor swap while we're in there we'll change the either arm we'll do a belt and we'll do the bearings uh, and that will hopefully pretty much renew this thing outside of the motor or something you know other major catastrophe it should continue to run for quite a while so this is what this video is about and uh let's get to it so we'll try to keep this as punchy to the as we can even though that intro is fairly long so we've unplugged the dryer that would be step number one cool trick i did learn on youtube from other users is that with this unit here you can actually you don't have to do anything in the back we don't actually have to move the dryer at all if i put my foot on the intake here and lift up hard, it's gonna pop, and it can be hard to come up, but... Uh, this will actually pop off these two little little guys here now. Uh, and so it allows this to open up. Be careful you don't stretch too many wires, but it's actually meant to open. And what I'm gonna do is take a bungee cord, just because it's annoying to lift this thing up and down all the time, and I'm actually just gonna hook it up here to my shelving, uh, to these drawers up here so that it stays up and out of the way while we're doing this process. Uh, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is actually take the nose off of the dryer and there's screw, 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 screw. So we got six screws and we can pull the whole front off of the dryer that you see here. And as I poke down here, there's a screw here, screw here, and screw here. So we'll take out those six and next step it. Hopefully this will be the only one where we don't actually fast forward through it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And while you're taking those out, take your, your, your screen out as well. The only thing holding it in are these two clips here. And note we have our door sensor wire that's actually here. So if you lift up, and this one had already kind of popped a little bit. And then there's this plug here is actually just a wiggle pull me plug right underneath here. So pull that out. 
undo it from the wire loom right there, this little guy, set it aside, because we won't need it at all, and then if you lift up, the nose actually, there's actually two, uh, two slots that it actually sits in. There's one, and there's the other one, and they fit into two little grooves in the bottom there. That's all that ho holds the nose on this dryer. Outside of holding the front together, that's about all that that part does here. So now you can see the, the main running part of our dryer. Uh, so our next up for us is going to be, uh, we're gonna work on getting the drum out. So clearly this isn't rocket science. Uh, we're probably gonna remove this panel first. There's three holding it on. And then we can remove the four that are holding the front of this drum on. Um, so let's do this one first. This part just, as you saw, just slides down. It's kind of th this where you see the felt and things on this part that sits up there, just slides down and you can pull it off. Great time to clean that. We kind of cleaned ours when we did the heater element while we were here. Set that aside too. I think I jumped ahead a little bit. Inside the machine here, and let me grab my light. There is a belt, obviously. If yours is broken on your machine, then you're all good. But um, I still have the belt and I don't want to throw it away. So to get my camera to focus deep inside there, long story short, there is a belt tensioner right next to the motor. And so what we're gonna do is reach in and loosen the belt and pop it off there. And so we can get our belt to actually be loose. So uh, let me see what I can do to light that up for you. And you can watch me do it. So our dryer is actually more broken than I thought it was. So there's that pulley that uh, the belt's actually supposed to go around. And if I turn the drum, Notice how it's actually split in half and the belt actually goes through it. So it's actually supposed to be turning, like I'm turning the drum now, you can see the belt maybe move. And the, the pulley is toast, so our dryer we thought was running just great, actually isn't. So um, good thing we got the replacement parts, even though I didn't even notice that this part was broken. Super happy that we, we got all the replacement parts that we had it for, especially for the fairly inexpensive $100 price to do it. Next up up for us is to remove this front drum retainer. And I believe at some point, yeah, because this sensor is actually connected to uh, the front of the part we're removing here, it's got a push me, pull me clip. Push the little button and pull it out. And that releases one of the sensors we're actually gonna be replacing here. So now we'll undo these four screws on time lapse and we'll uh, pull the drum out. The dryer front now is actually, and I believe this contains the, the two front bearings, is actually now hanging off the front. So we'll actually need to lift it up and pull it out for it to come off. And then there's a lip around the drum that the bearings actually sit on. Now these two bearings, at my understanding, were fine and they seem to be fine. So uh, we're okay there, but we have a sensor we're gonna be replacing on this front piece and obviously we've got some lint buildup. Not a big deal, but something to note. The next big assembly is actually the drum and it's just sitting in here. Now it's actually resting on the fan in the front and similar to the back, it's sitting on those bearings. So you have to lift it up a little bit and pull it out. Our belt should be loose now. So you can either have it flap off around the back or you can go ahead and just move it now. And I should just be able to lift up and kind of pull it out. And it'll only squeeze through. You see there's cutouts on each side. That's how it actually works through here. So here's the drum. Actually nothing to do here, so we'll set it aside. Here's where we've got some work to do. Number one, we need to vacuum everything because there's lots of dust after this much use. This is a normal bearing. Do you see the metal port part actually rotates on some wheels or whatever it rotates? And here's our failed bearing. As you can see, the blue plastic part has completely separated. Uh, it's still rolled, so that's why it was still working, but it's obviously not something you actually want to keep continuing on here. And then if we come down here to the idler pulley, it's actually completely seized. So it's not that it was broken. And, well, you can see where it's quite damaged, uh, where something happened at some time and the belt has just been wearing, slipping on. It's a very smooth, slippery surface, maybe thanks to the dust. So the belt's just been powering through that as well. And then here's our motor. 
uh, which seems to be fine. I say seems to be fine. Apparently everything on this dryer is toasted. Uh, but uh, so we'll be replacing this and the bearings and the belt should be free to be removed. We got to remember to put the new belt on before we uh, uh, put the drum back in. First item we're going to tackle is the, the pulley here. I need to also note the only tool we've ever used for this machine is a screwdriver so far, a Phillips number two screwdriver. So when the, it's all the way down and there's no belt tension, that belt tension, this is a fairly actually easy screw to, uh, spring to release. But you need to note that there is a limit switch here. And so what happens is, is if your belt were to break, it trips this to stop the motor from running, so your dryer won't run. So another reason why your dryer may not run is because this switch is tripped because the belt is broken. Uh, and you can see how when it's open or tightening, it has a, the switch fine and then it will actually trip it. So when we reinstall the new one, uh, we'll need to make sure that that arm does exactly the same thing. Ditto with the spring, we need to make sure it's connected right. That's a Phillips screwdriver. Let's take this screw out and then we'll compare it to our new parts. So we have our old part here. This bearing is completely toast. I can't, I can barely turn it by hand. You can see where it broke at some point. There's a big piece missing out of it that I actually haven't been able, it looks like it's collapsed in on itself. And then it just froze in a nice spot where the belt was actually able to ride on it. And essentially the motor was powering the belt across this either. It was still doing tension. Uh, and note that it has a shouldered bolt here that screws in and it actually rides on the shouldered portion. Our new part actually has that as well. So we'll open up the bag. And sometimes it's nice to compare the parts you have. So that's the bag, here's the screw. That uh, is also in a cute little bag. And here's a new spring. Now I presume that these are all rated the same. Uh, we're not going to throw the old ones away quite yet, but uh, you can see it's old thing is supposed to spin Where this one's frozen so that'll help out and then of course we have our shouldered screw and the little arm that trips this, The lever here and we'll have a new spring pulling it down nice and tight on it for us So we'll get this new assembly in and we'll just get rid of this other stuff once we're sure that it's running correctly So with our new arm in place and there's also a little tab here that actually fits right into this groove and we'll put it in under, put our new screw in. Bump our camera a bunch and you can look at the back of my hand. <laughs> Pull that so the shoulder is actually on the part. And that lets you tighten the screw down so that it's tight, but it actually leaves the arm free. So now you can see how bouncy we are. And then we'll take our new screw, which, uh, I'm sorry, our spring, which uh, if you notice was actually almost loose when it was in the down position. We'll hook it here. And there is uh, a hook on the front. We'll actually hook it to the, the arm first. Then bring it back here and hook it there and now our tension screw is uh, our spring is all set as well so now when we have it riding it'll actually push down upon the belt so the belt comes down around and then through and away uh, and it'll be working like it should again so fantastic that part's done next let's work on these bearings it's a little interesting trick to get these off apparently what we're dealing with here with all four bearings is we have a nut on the back that's connected to a stud. Our new kit doesn't include the nut, so we'll have to reuse it. And then on the front, there's two flats. So thinking that this was metric, uh, I grabbed my metric wrench set. So the whole thing about screwdrivers is close, but not quite. It ends up being pretty close to a 16, but as loose as it is, I bet you it's actually an SAE size. So uh, whatever is closest to 16 millimeter. And ditto with the 9. Honestly, it's probably closer to an 8, but 5 sixteenths, I just grabbed that, and it actually works fairly well, too, to actually let you go there. So uh, what I'm going to do is set you up, and we're going to break this free, and then this whole stud that the bearing's on comes out, and then we'll just replace it with the new one times 4. So these are easy to reach, and I'll show you one. 
And then these are a little bit more problematic because this back is actually not the back of the of the dryer. It's actually a part that comes out and apparently re removing it's more of a pain. So I'll actually, it's easiest just to come up behind and put your, your socket, your wrench on that and then release it and put the new one in. But you kind of have to feel around and this lower one's gonna be even worse for that. But uh, you just push through it, <laughs> you'll be fine. It's not that hard. And uh, we'll be able to get all four of these bearings replaced. Here's our old assembly, which this one isn't broken, so it's no big deal, actually. You probably could leave it in service if you wanted to. It just has years of use on it. Uh, if you were cheap, you totally could take the plastic retainer off, pop the wheel on, and pop the new wheel, you know, take, take the old one off and put the new wheel on the existing stud. Uh, but if this bearing is seized, which it looks like this one is actually, has just been rotating on the, the shaft, it actually hasn't been turning. Maybe that's how it works. Uh, either way, check it out on this one. Yeah, it's just a lot more free. Um, so there's wear and tear on that. But this is the new one. Uh, with this old one, you'll have a washer you'll need to put on the front. I'm sorry, on the back. You'll put it through the machine. And then you'll put between the, the metal over here, you'll have this one and then this lock nut. Boy, was this thing hard to take off. It's on there tight. So... Uh, be note of that you're gonna have to put a little bit of horsepower to uh, to get this thing off so I'm gonna do the other one on the front here and then we'll film the ones on the back of the machine so this one not so hard this one's harder to do just because of the limited access if you're not going to remove this pipe that you see there now um, a, a key or a tip i also learned is that once you break it free put your finger on that nut and hold it there and then hand unwheel this and then grab your new one and wheel it in that way be sure to put your washer on that way you don't have to rearrange or line up or do any of that kind of start threading work you can just do it from this side so now we have all our bearings installed I don't know if we should oil these or not. It seems like it's metal on metal, but oil also tends to attract dirt, which would plug the bearing, which could also make bad news. So I think I'm gonna leave them as is for that. With the bearings locked in, with the heater corrected, that's probably gonna fix our heating problem, but we bought these sensors, so we might as well put them in anyway. Uh, we've got four here. There's actually five on your dryer. The moisture sensor lives on the inlet. There's those two metal bars you see there, and I'm guessing what it does is it measures the conductivity of the laundry going through. And if it's wet, it's fairly conductive, and when it's dry, it isn't. So that didn't come in our kit. What did come is for our heating element, we actually have the thermostat, which actually operates the, the hot and the cold. And then we have a fuse here, the overheat, essentially. And this is a one-use trip item. So once it's tripped, you actually have to replace it. Uh, that's the event that this thing completely fails. Uh, it keeps the, the dryer from getting too hot. So we'll change it out just for fun, but we'll keep, actually we'll keep all the sensors since they technically work. We'll put them in a little baggie. Probably ought to just drop them inside the drum here and and uh, that way we'll know where they are. Um, actually, I like that idea a lot. We'll probably just tape it to the side right here and then we'll know where they live. Uh, the other two sensors are actually on the discharge of the dryer, um, they're of the blower motor. They're here and they're here. Um, as to what specifically they do, I know one's an over temp and the other one is something else. Not 100% sure what, but we'll change them out anyway because we're here and because these are eight years old. While they might be fine, while we're here, let's take care of everything. If you're worried about the wiring on how this heater element works, it's fairly simple. Any device can shut down the heater. So we actually only have two wires and these are actually 220. Uh, we have the blue wire that goes along and if you follow it it goes us through our overheat fuse if that's okay then it comes along and then it goes into our little thermostat and if that's okay then it actually comes over here to the other side of the heater and then from the heater it goes up back on its way here so if this trips it shuts the heater down and if this shuts off it shuts the heater down so just kind of remember that's your wiring path so if you unplug these and oops I mixed them up it's just the flow of water essentially through these wires here the flow of current uh, to the electrical element and then back towards the dryer brains, if you will. So 
So all the new parts are in. The only notable thing uh, is that this sensor here, the little black one with the, like, it looks like a little resistor that's on it, does have an up and a down. Uh, looking at it, here's the used one. It doesn't jump out at you that it's different, but it actually is slightly different, <laughs> uh, either in thickness or in size, even though, yeah, looking at it, it seems like it's the same up and down. But what I found is that it, it wouldn't go in one way, so if I flipped it over, it popped right in like it was nothing. So don't try to force it in. It should either go in nice or flip it over and it will. So that's just a heads up. Both of them are, are fairly dirty that are in the dryer stream. It's that one and, and this one right here. Um, these two, like I say, are probably fine. They're held back from the heater. Don't know what that green is. Maybe that's an okay test. Not 100% sure. And then this one, like I say, probably not an issue with it either, but uh, we'll pull it out just for maintenance sake. Uh, so with that, we're done with the install of materials. Like I said, we gotta put the, the drum on and we have to reattach the belt. Now the belt, the belt actually comes down off of the drum and around this pulley and then across the motor and then up. And the motor is a, it's a serpentine belt actually. It's got little grooves in it that the motor engages with. So the back of the belt um, just runs around the drum, but it actually, this will be on the smooth part, then the grooved part and up and back around again. So uh, heads up for that. I'm gonna re-vacuum again, cause even though I vacuumed, there's still places where I miss cause there's a lot of nooks and crannies in this thing. So first up, uh, I'll time-lapse most of this, but just remember you've got to pop the edge of the drum off over these wheels. So that's something to note. You got to kind of plop it in there. Uh, then we're going to put our belt on and then we're going to do the front. I guess we can wait for the belt till after we get the drum entirely on. And then we'll have to feel around and I'll film that as best I can. The belt is done. I found easiest with the actual front of off. So you make sure it's all in one way and we actually have the spline towards the drum. Uh, this way you can essentially, if you're doing it from the front, you have to hug the drum essentially. One on each side and what you do is you loop the belt around the motor and then you get the tensioner as you can see it right here. It actually rides on the smooth outside of the belt. So it comes off the drum, it goes over the tensioner and then down to the motor and then from the motor it then goes up and back around the drum again and it should realign itself. Mine's off a little bit actually so you can see where the old wear line is. I imagine there was quite a bit of slippage because it was powering through a dead idler pulley and some and the bearings were not bad They're, they just were, were broken so um, with that we'll cut to the me putting the drum on and we'll time lapse the front going on after we put this bottom piece back on and uh, we should be good to go for a test. So the final test, we have it full of clothes, dryer vents clean, got some dryer balls in there. We plugged it back in and it appears that our chute is not too damaged. So we went in there, so that'll go outside. Let's power it up. No error codes out the gate. We had the running time drive because of our overheating issue. Normal dry, high heat, start. No squeaking, just it running. Sounds about right. So that's how you really overhaul your dryer. It's not really much left to replace outside of the motor, which would probably be fairly straightforward, but expensive. If you have any questions, ask them. And if you have any comments, leave those too. Otherwise, subscribe to like this video if you did like it. And subscribe to Red Barn Homestead for more repair and unboxing and crafty sewing machine videos and all that good stuff and we'll see you next time.